Okay, I figured that I would, um, I might as well demonstrate this. Um, this pretty crazy and insane thing that I put together. Um, so, uh, what I've created here is a system by which, so, alright, start with some background. The National Weather Service has this handy little tool called the Weather Wire, um, which is about like it sounds. It is a line through which all um, weather-based information comes through. It's essentially a, it manifests in the form of a telnet server, which you can see here, um, that spews forth like a fountain all sorts of crazy weather information um, in the form of text. So this wire conveys all the information for the entire country issued by the National Weather Service from severe weather warnings, tornado warnings for thunderstorm, winter weather, what have you, um, to more mundane things like forecasts and climate summaries and hydrologic reports and all sorts of boring drizzle. Um, so from the exciting to the mundane, everything comes through here in this fast scrolling list that looks really cool. Um, but this Kind of, by, kind of by itself is useless to the average user unless you're going to sit here and stare intently into the abyss of information. Um, it's not going to notify you of any emergency or any other thing you want to know about uh, unless you have very fast eyes. So, what we can do from that is, instead of just looking at the straight raw stream, this program here, by the message, which isn't mine at all, I found it on the internet, um, it processes, and it's hardly out of focus, because I'm pointing my camera at a screen, um, it processes all the information that comes in. It takes those uh, that endless stream and breaks it down into blocks called products. These products contain whatever piece of information you can see here. It gives you the uh, title of the, of the received product. And um, what this does is, once it breaks it down, it checks it against a list of criteria. Uh, and I hit the wrong button. List of criteria, which is this giant thing. This list of criteria is all the, so all the products that come in are checked. You can see here you have the product type, product title. Um, and it will check it against the type of product and any additional information you enter. A good example would be here. TOR, that's a tornado warning. Um, and it is checked to see if it's a tornado warning. If it is, it's further checked to see what state and then what county. In this case, it checks to see if it is DeKalb or Fulton counties in Georgia. If it matches that criteria, in this example, um, set here, it sends out an email. Um, oh no. Alright, no, I've broken that. Um, it sends out an email to both my main email address and as an SMS to my phone in the event it's incapable of receiving the email for whatever reason. Additionally, um, it sends it to a printer. And when I say a printer, I mean this little machine. This machine is a receipt printer like the kind you'd find in a supermarket. It uses thermal paper, a long ribbon of it, and it can print very quickly onto uh, onto this paper. And I have it hooked into the system so that if a message if a message meets the criteria and it is set to print that information, which most of these are, um, it will come off of this printer in almost real time. As soon as it's received, it gets processed very quickly and then pops off the printer. Now, in order to demonstrate that, since I don't think it's very likely a random message is going to be received that meets these flags, as many of them as there are, um, I can generate a test product, which what it'll do is it'll, when I hit this button, it'll create a uh, fake product with the correct meeting that criteria and then put it into the queue, in which case it'll get flagged and processed, just like a real product would, uh, to effectively test to make sure everything is working correctly. So when I hit this yes button, it'll create that product and insert it into, it'll create the fake tornado warning and insert it into the queue. I'm going to pull the camera back so that you can see the printer, because as soon as I hit that button, that message is going to come out of here almost instantly. 
So I'm gonna hit it here. Yes. And there it is. That print out. Out of focus. Focus. There we go. That contain this printout contains the entire bulletin, uh, all the information that you would see in a normal tornado warning bulletin. We'll come off of this printer. This one's relatively short because it's just a test. Um, a normal one would be much longer because it contains the information like the cities, the nature of the threat, that sort of stuff. Uh, so. Um, most of these, only a few of them are flagged to send me emails, ones I consider very important. The other ones are just archived. So, it monitors that constant flow, and runs it against that check, and if it meets it, it comes out of here instantly. That way, there's you have a hard copy, and you can pretend like you're on a submarine, and like you've just received your orders from the surface, and... That's pretty crazy, um, I realize. But here we are. So that's what I've made. Um, well, when I say I've made it, I just put it together using other people's software. I had to write a program to allow this, um, allow this software to communicate with this printer because while this software is designed to communicate with printers, it's not designed to communicate with printers like these. It gets a little funky. So I had to design it so that it goes through a long and arduous process where it exports a text file and then that text file gets printed. And it's very boring and very tedious and I won't go into it much further. Um, but, long story short, that's, this is the crazy way in which I disseminate weather information. Um, usually the printer I don't consider to be important. The printer's just there as, um, as fluff. Anything that is truly important gets sent to me as an email um, where I can get it on my phone. Um, and that is about all there is to say about that. I'd say that was a pretty successful test. And it's, it just sits there, it's running on the server, which I'm remote desktop into. Um, and that just sits there and runs 24-7 in the background. Uh, and anything that's pertinent gets pushed over here. If the printer's offline, it uh, gets sent to my phone. So there's no big deal that way. And it's pretty cool. It's really strange and really esoteric, I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to pretend it's not, but whatever, I'm into it, fuck you. That's how that works, and then this sits here and spews information. I usually don't have this open, but this is just to demonstrate. And you can just stare into the abyss, the endless stream, forever. It never stops. Never. Well, I imagine it could stop. But if it did, I think we'd all die.